I'm here with Prakuti Angelina. I'm your host, Stephen. And uh, the question I have for you, Prax, is the idea of this like lo kakahenge, like meaning there's this like pressure to really kind of cater to people, especially like last conversation, we talked about how one of the hardest things for you after, you know, this favor that's come in your life is people's expectations of you. Why did you see that person? Why did you not see me? Mm. All these things and how hard that is for you because mm. people don't know your heart. Mm. Um, so how's that been? And like for someone maybe who's listening, yeah. like what would you say to those kind of people who are facing that? Maybe not even at the level mm. of, of yours, but mm. from their church community as a worship leader, as a woman, you know, how have you dealt with that? You know, has that been hard? Have you faced that? You know, do you have any stories? Do you want me to answer honestly? <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Like, because wow. this is to help others, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think people really underestimate how much goes on in someone's mind, especially, I mean, I can only speak from a woman's perspective because <laughs> I'm a woman. But, uh, you know, especially as a woman, right? Like, there are so many things that are unsaid that we think about. Like, when you go somewhere, what time is it? Like, who am I going with? Um, how is this going to look? Like, you know, even bringing people home now that I'm, like, living as a single woman. Um, I've had to even think about how my friends think about that change. You know, everyone asks me, okay, they want to know, right? Everyone's wondering, why did you move, first of all? Like, is there something wrong at home? But the thing is, no, it's great. Like, my, I had my mom's blessing and all of that. But people have their assumptions, their ideas. And the worst thing is when they don't ask you. <laughs> they want, they believe whatever they want to believe. So right? let me ask you, so, because, like, I'm from outside, right? Yeah. Like, is that is that, like, not something people do, especially as, like, young women move away from their mom's house or dad's house? In India? Yeah. I think it's quite rare. In the cities, it's Do you have changing. any friends? Do you have any friends that have done that? That yeah, live in yes. the same city yeah, as, yeah, yeah. as their parents and still move out? Yeah, I, I do have friends. I think at Face to Face, our community, we've been... Like, you know, when heaven comes down, Stephen, like, culture has to change. Wow, wow. Um, it just has to respond to what God is doing, however that looks. Uh, and if it looks different from whatever we've seen all these years, then so be it, right? Like, who are we to stop... Uh, when God is breaking some things, breaking patterns, doing new things, why would we hold on to systems that have not even helped us, you know, just right. to preserve some tradition or something like that, right? So I think there are a lot of women who've done this. Um, but there is, it's not, I guess it's not, so for me, I'll tell you how it was for me. I know people who moved out and all of that, right? Like, But when it came to me doing it, Rachel and I were talking, Rachel Francis, and mm -hmm. she's the one who helped me see that I was carrying so much shame about moving out and just living alone, not having married and moved out. Wow. Because I was always, like in my head, it was always like, okay, I'll be with my mom and then I'll get married and then I'll move out. But then there was this desire in my heart, like I've never studied away from family. I've never lived on my own. I've always kind of relied on my mom to take care of like the house stuff and yeah, we've grown up in that kind of pattern also right like she was a single mom she just gave everything for us and somewhere I did not want to continue those patterns I was becoming something I didn't like you know so just a lot of things a really hard season I didn't talk about this anywhere but uh, last year was amazing song wise and all of that but these things were happening under the surface and I was like how am I going to move out I'm a single woman uh, in ministry I don't have a job right uh, you know by design of course like uh, do you feel like women have this. more pressure than men in Indian culture or in, like in the church or you know as far as like decision making what kind of pressure do you mean so you're talking you know you bring up the fact that as a woman you know um, especially as you explain some of the things mm. that you're going through, mm. um, do you feel that if a man sometimes was making the same decisions as you, um, do you feel like they would face the same kind of like criticism or hardship? I think each each of us has our own challenges, right? But the thing is, there's so many unsaid expectations and pressures that surround a woman. For example. A guy wouldn't think twice about doing certain things, whereas 
a woman would have to think about so many factors like i said give me a few give me a few okay for example i go to the studio and record at night sometimes right and even with the security guards here i keep thinking okay what are they going to think when i come back late every day and you know i mean i have so many brothers at the house and each day one of them used to drop me home you know back when i used to do internship we used to serve it used to get late and probably for a guy he only has to care about physical safety <laughs> Right. And there are conservative households where they are like you need to come back home before time what are you doing and all of that. So there is that pressure for guys as well. Right. But I think there's a lot more shame involved in it for a woman. Like every time I would it's you know it's not a huge thing but it's it's always there. It's like oh wow. what are they going to think? Uh, are they going to think that I was out with somebody? Wow. Is there going to be a doubt on my character on my you know it's huge issues wow. in fleeting moments. <laughs> and women have to like deal with that on a on such a regular basis i don't know if people realize it but it's it's so 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 common like even when you go out just anywhere like right on the road and you know these are just things that come with being a woman especially in a culture and when you're christian there's just so many more things added to it right yeah i so in that sense i i i would say it's harder to deal with cultural expectations Yeah so like mm-hmm. you uh, you know earlier we were having this conversation and you said something that was really interesting about how you also used to struggle with like judging others yeah. and really criticism and a yeah. spirit of criticism yeah. um what would you say to those people who are struggling with that spirit of criticism because like yeah. i mean i know even you working with bridge you know you have received yeah. criticism especially Rachel you know you just mentioned yeah, your yeah. friend Rachel mm-hmm. um like from Maki Saman and some of the songwriting um so what what was that journey like for you what changed you you know especially for those who are listening who are like honestly maybe even looking for something to judge you about <laughs> oh speaking about that funny you brought that up um I heard that recently someone made a video about me and my hand movements I heard about <laughs> it I didn't watch it that's amazing I didn't watch it because I got to watch it So the thing is um today Robin Shah was talking about making history with God. Mm. And who's Robin Shah for Robin, those who don't who yeah, don't know sorry, him? Correct. Uh Robin Robin William is uh one of my leaders, mentors. He's been like a father to me. He's from Face to Face as well, like the House of Prayer where I serve. Awesome. So he's been he and his family are such a blessing. Don't make me talk about them. I'll cry. Oh. <laughs> okay, but We uh, love you, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> but he was telling me, I mean, sorry, his the word today was about worship, right? Like worship means having personal history with God. So, for me, uh one of the biggest journeys has been just tackling yourself with God. Tackling who you are. challenging that allowing god to challenge you and break you and also build you and i've realized that a lot of christians don't do that like they don't let god question them or challenge them and if i had not let that <laughs> yep if if you just heard that that was <laughs> diwali. diwali it's diwali today we're recording on diwali so i guess so. it stopped raining because people are out now just like that again but um i was saying a lot of people don't let god challenge them and the thing with that is if you don't let god challenge you you will never change you will whoa, be stuck whoa. in your own ways that's a powerful statement and i think i remember you posting something about you know do you want to be known as a person who changes the world or do you actually want to change the world wow and it's about that do you want to be like jesus or do you just want to be known as someone who's like oh amazing blah 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 right and so that journey of allowing god to question and challenge right um god did that with me on an everyday basis right like every time i would judge somebody every time um i would have these assumptions and the thing is what i want to tell people listening is this is an everyday process it's it's an everyday battle to say you know what i can assume a hundred things but what benefit is that for me or for that person or for the kingdom of god or for the heart of god like how how is this going to affect the heart of god if i assume something about this person um 
and just journeying through that has made me stop judging people and this was a prayer that i prayed in college when i used to be really judgmental <laughs> i was in a girls college and i was this holy kid who wanted everybody to know jesus and you know stop swearing because i was around a lot of you know <laughs> culture urban culture and and i realized one day like god made me see that i'm not able to love people because i'm busy judging them i'm wow. not able to show them jesus that was a powerful statement you just made you're not able to love them because you're so busy judging them right you can't see them for who they truly are what they're going through you can't love and judge at the same time you just wow. can't do that wow i'm not talking about discernment obviously you discern and you know what's inside a person's heart and spirit and all of that but loving them means laying down your judgment on them and knowing that there is a righteous judge who has already passed the judgment on his son right so that wow. we can receive a judgment of grace and a judgment of righteousness instead of the judgment of sin wow and that's what god did for me and what changed stuff for me was when god showed me how bad i am <laughs> in wow. his eyes if he had to start judging me not a Shoot. hair on my body would be Pax, able to withstand it that's a powerful statement that's so moving to me to hear you even say that because many people don't see that in a sense like they read the bible to judge others or to see what's wrong with the world or other people yeah. but i feel like even for me in my story i remember the first time when i would used to read the word and i would just weep because yeah. i would see myself yeah. i was the person mm -hmm. you know on the side of the road like yeah. the, the good samaritan came and rescued me right yeah. and um man like i just love having friends like you mm -hmm. that are so authentic and seeing the lord touch you like that um but yeah like what was that f like for you having that encounter with the lord um I think for me forgiveness was something that was really hard to do because I felt like the whole I mean I felt like my dad had hurt me betrayed me and my family and I felt like the whole world was full of horrible people mm. who would out to you know just betray you I couldn't trust anyone and I just had this whole negative outlook about the world and then I think that's what the love of God does to you um it shows you of course the word of God right only when you read the word of God and you let it like you said you let it speak to you instead of you know mm. immediately going to preach i think that's one very powerful principle steven like whenever i am in the presence and whenever i hear the word right i always receive it right because who am i to not receive it like it's mm. the word of god and every day i need to eat to live right right so who am i to say oh i have i have heard this verse before it's not for me every day i need his word and when i receive it mm. there's so much life in that there's so much truth in that yeah So the word of God becomes such a mirror, right? To show you, hey, this is who you really are. You might think a hundred things about yourself, but this is who you really are, and that's when you know you need grace, right? And so for me, that's when I was really able to receive God's love, receive His mercy, right? And when the mercy of God becomes real to you, right? When you know just how undeserving you are, but God has showered His mercy. Mm. done literally the opposite of what you deserve um you cannot help but give that out to people it yeah. just flows out from you you're like hey listen like jesus did this for me and that's when salvation becomes real the love of god becomes wow. real you're like jesus did this for me he he took what i deserved the punishment that i deserved the like i used to complain about my life like oh this is not working that is not working and it's true like i i had a lot of struggles yeah but when i realized that god doesn't owe me anything like right. he doesn't owe me a perfect life Whoa. and anything good i have anything beautiful i have is grace it's his beauty and it's his gift yeah wow when Dude, I, this is yeah. powerful <laughs> yeah when i started living like that i think everything changes because i think judgment comes from entitlement mm It's like, oh, you! How could you do this to me? Judgment comes from entitlement. Let yeah, come on, keep going. <laughs> like, like, judgment yeah. comes from entitlement. Talk to me about that. So, if someone is struggling with judging others, yeah. what are they entitled to? Why would you say that? Judgment comes from entitlement. What I mean by that is, um, you cannot be a humble. Let's put it this way, right? Like, who's the judge? Jesus. Mm. And he's the only one who belongs on that throne. 
Right. But when we build thrones for ourselves and we put ourselves on it and we're like, oh, I'm sitting here to judge you. Mm. That's where it comes from, right? Like if you really think about it, every judgment we make basically comes from a position where we're like, oh, I know better than you or I am better than you. Wow. And I'm going to pass a judgment on you. Wow. Because if you are at the feet of Jesus, yeah, like Mary, knowing that you have... Like it's between you and the Lord. It's just you and the Lord. There's no one in the equation. Yeah. And when you know that you deserve absolutely nothing good, like, yeah. But it's His grace and mercy over you. You're just not in a position to sit there and judge anyone. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, when you're yeah, at the feet no. of Jesus, breaking your alabaster, right. you don't have time to judge. You you right. don't even have that option. Right. Uh, because the righteous judge is already enthroned, and you are not. Wow, wow, so on. judgment comes from entitlement because you feel like, oh, um, this person is supposed to do this right. and they're not doing it. And somehow we feel like just because we are not sinning in that same way, right. that we can hold them accountable to a standard just because we have somehow maintained it by grace. <laughs> right. We think that's the thing, right? We don't realize. Let me Let me tell you this. Even to... Even to have, like, say say you don't get angry very easily. Okay. Okay. And you, you have a friend who gets super angry, hot-headed. They just blurt out stuff. Yeah. I mean, you did not make yourself. You did not make your personality. You didn't create your genes, right. your DNA. You know, wow. you just have a genetic predisposition to be a calm person or maybe... You know, I'm just saying, if you're, if no, you're no, a person true. who yeah, doesn't yeah. get angry, I'm not saying if you're angry and then you control your anger. If you just don't fall in that way. Yeah, yeah. That's not so your easy. like, yeah. But one day, I remember God telling me this, okay? And it changed how I looked at things. He said, put yourself in that person's shoes. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I've heard that phrase before. You know? <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. Put yourself in that person's shoes. And I mean in every way. Put yourself in their social environment how they grew up their genetic predispositions their uh, parents how you know how they were brought up their environmental factors everything that has shaped that person if those were the same things that had shaped you yeah. you would be that person yeah like including the genetic factors right like you would be that person and then you would be doing these things that they're doing so how can you say if yeah. you were in their place that you would not do that same thing wow wow come on you just cannot say that. And that's where judgment kind of dies because like it dies there, right? Yeah. Like how would you have you... compassion and you can, yeah, I mean, we need more of that, honestly, like uh, for people who are listening, as we kind of close up this, um, how, what, what tips would you give practically? Mm. Like, um, I know one of the things I love that you said is that you were putting yourself before mentors and, going to church and just listening and putting yourself at the house. Uh, and that's another topic for another time. Cause I want to talk to you about how the house has impacted your ministry, like face to face, but you know, what tips, you know, give me like just like three things for someone who um, has struggled with judgment and also for people who right now, maybe they're feeling really judged by their community. Maybe they're a worship leader. Maybe they're a woman leader. Mm. And they're mm -hmm. feeling like the world's just coming down on them. What are just some things that you have held on to in the last year mm -hmm. under this pressure, under these like just, you know, binoculars yeah, yeah, yeah. of mm. the culture? What are things, just give me like a few tips, just like three tips, you know, to close <laughs> this session that you would give okay. to them. So like a short answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like the first thing. What would you say? It has been really important for you. I mean, even right now, I'm going through something where someone passed judgment on me just because I'm a woman and I went to a friend's house who's a guy and then suddenly it's like we're in a relationship. <laughs> right. And, you know, these things are very common, but they're so hurtful. Yeah. Like this season, I've been grieving the loss of a few friends. And wow. Me hanging out because with of like where you've come, like m meaning your status now, in a sense, like people knowing who you are, like. Has caused you to lose friends, or no, what no, do you no. mean? No, I meant the death of like oh, like friends an actual this year. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, like okay. all the losses we had this year, right? Like oh yeah, yeah, losing yeah. friends, right? And this season, I was in that place of just mourning someone I lost, and yeah. 
So I, I was in a busy season, right? Like I'm traveling everywhere. Oh, sorry. Short answer. Okay, okay, okay. No, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, I just... Let's get into this. Since we're, we're actually one. being real, I was just thinking how awkward that was that that I was just like thinking like metaphorical, like right. loss, loss of friends. <laughs> But it was actually like loss, but it's not something I mean, appropriate I've to laugh about. I've experienced both. Yeah, right. So it's been a hard year. Let's just say yeah. that. I was just uh, thinking for someone who's listening, they're like, ah, oh, Stephen, you really blew it there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. No, no, yeah. No. I mean, it's been a hard year, guys. It's just yeah. been crazy, crazy. <sighs> so here I am traveling, right? You're like, right. I'm in the season of shoots and I'm around all these new people and I get to hear about the death of a very good friend and it's so hard to take it in. And I'm just continuously traveling and finally I reach the city where I have one of my really, really good friends mm. and he invites me home and all of that. And then I'm spending one day with him and his family and for the first time I'm able to just like relax and just be in that space and grieve. And later I find out that People were talking about me and this person and uh, making rumors about us, talking about us as if we are, you know, something more than friends. And I think the thing about judgment is we don't realize that these are real people with real lives with so much going on. I don't know if they knew that I was grieving and mourning and, you know, this was such a, it was such a nice day for me to spend with my friend, a familiar face in all of this newness, right? I, if people knew that, I don't know, maybe maybe they'd think twice. So I would just say, if you are someone who is very prone to judging people, um, first of all, pray and ask the Lord to change you because you really need a change of heart to stop doing it because it's coming from your heart. Judgment comes from the heart and that's what makes it so much more dangerous. Yeah, It's not just coming from a mind evaluation. Yeah, It's coming from the heart. And your heart is not meant to do that. Your heart is meant to love and honor, right? Right. So practically speaking, <laughs> <laughs> I would say pray and ask the Lord to touch that area of your life. Right. Honestly, you need the Lord. Even to overcome judgment, don't think you can do it on your own because it's coming from pride and entitlement. You need right, the Lord right. to. The other thing I would say is uh, definitely practice empathy. Yeah. <laughs> if you were in that person's place, would you, would you be so quick to judge? Yeah. And like I said, put yourself really in that person's place. Yeah. And yeah. the third thing is, I would say, if you have a relationship with that person, mm -hmm. just talk to them. If you, if a judgment comes up, because see, we are humans mm. and we have a hundred thoughts and perspectives and angles and cultural uh, things that have shaped us. So if something comes up in your mind, if you have a relationship with that person, go up to them and be like, hey, is this what it is? Mm. And clarify it. And if you don't have a relationship with that person, then it's none your business. So <laughs> you better be carrying on with your life <laughs> and with your circle that God has entrusted you with. Wow, wow. Because trust me, you are not the caretaker of the whole world. God has put people in everyone's life to take care of them. So like for me, I have my mentors. I have people to watch out for me to keep me accountable and God cares about me more than you know God cares about my righteousness and my purity and my reputation more than anybody else right. so just trust God <laughs> so you, you're trying to tell those people that are out there that don't know you that are making <laughs> no, I'm, no 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 I mean this is not about me but I'm just saying like in general yeah like just that's like that's a for rule personal that I advice. practice and I've, yeah. I've seen I've seen Sam do that and I've mm -hmm. seen I've learned, I mean, I'm also learning, right? Like, I, right. yeah, so to talk a little bit about, uh, just make this another episode. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to talk about how I used to judge a lot and why I, I don't do that anymore is because I used to judge just left and right because I had trust issues. I, I still, I'm still working through some of those, right? I don't know what to expect from people. And so my mind immediately goes to the negative, to, oh, this is... The, I'm just assuming the worst about somebody. Right. And the sad part about that is you can never partner with God's heart and his move if you constantly keep speaking death over somebody or releasing, you know, negativity over someone. You, ha There has to be a point where you're like, I want to be the one who calls out life from this person. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been really challenged by people, <laughs> by my 
leaders by Nixon, by Sam. I've learned so much about not assuming yeah. something. It's hard to do. I understand, guys. I empathize with you. <laughs> I even no. judged bridge music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm let's talk joking. about that. Why yeah. did you judge bridge music? Let's hear. See that that's the thing. Maybe because right? like, like some of the people of people listening, they might be judging yeah. bridge music. They might be I'm like sure. you. And I'm maybe, sure they do. Yeah. Why? Why did you judge bridge music? Um. Or what did you judge about them? That's the thing, right? About judgment, it's so senseless and it's so, it's so irrational and god held me accountable for this by the way i had to really repent and say sorry for all the dishonor and that's when god made a way for me to come into bridge i hope <laughs> i hope i hope sam doesn't hear this but i know i think he knows this i've told him yeah but i think i was just doubtful see judgment also comes from fear mm. perfect love casts out all fear right that's why there's no mercy triumphs over judgment but judgment comes from fear mm. and a lot of Christians have right. this fear of deception. Oh my gosh, they're a cult. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they are f- not right theology. And th- operating from that kind of fear, right? It doesn't help the kingdom. It doesn't help <laughs> us come together. Right. So I just had this, uh, I mean, I wouldn't call it, it doesn't look like fear, right? It right. looks like judgment, but it's actually coming from fear. So I had this thought that maybe, oh, maybe these guys are just making music that's nice to listen to. Because they want all the views. Right. and Because it was just... So I had this thing, Stephen. This is very important to talk about. Okay. I had this thing where I was like, if something is popular, it is from the devil. Whoa. And a lot of people Whoa. believe Save this. for the people in the back. A lot of people believe this. They think that if something is popular, it's evil. From the devil. Yeah, because... Because they think money and fame and all of that is only from the devil. Right. And that's... Something that I had to allow the Lord to challenge me, like I said, please allow the Lord to challenge you because otherwise you will be stuck in the mud and you will rot (laughs) and you will make others rot. Let's talk about like the first time since we're talking about bridge and your first time and your judgy (laughs) past. Okay. So the first time you met Sam, it was a pastor (laughs) Rambabu, right? No, I think I met him at Outpouring in Delhi. Outpouring in Delhi. So. And and what was that interaction like? Was that how it started? <laughs> so Sam was just like, oh, hey, oh, you're Prakriti. I've heard you have a really nice voice. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first interaction? Yeah, that, that was it. And then okay. he didn't say much. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, thanks. Uh, had you heard about Bridge? Was, that, was this during that time that you were like judging... The ministry or no, I mean um was was did I hear wrong like about maybe I thought for some reason like you guys had met um or you had said something you you said, Hey, I like your song, I like this song. And he was just like in a hurry and was like climbing up on the stage. Oh, <laughs> you're right. That's the first time. I mean, yeah. So, so see the thing is I didn't meet Sam at that time. Right. That's just the it first was just interaction. The oh, first yeah, interaction, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, the first time was in Hyderabad Soar. Okay. Uh, I had heard Vandanam by then. And I okay. really liked Vandanam. Like, it right. blessed me so much. Right. And I was like, who is this guy? And uh, like, I loved Sanidhi also with like Alan Anna and John and Sam. And so that time it was just Sam Alex, right? Like, right. like okay, who is this uh, cool guy, cool dude. Right. Uh, all the girls seem to be... <laughs> <laughs> fans right. little extra fans right but anyway uh so i i he's passing me by on the stairs and i was just like i think he knew me by then because we had to do worship together and stuff like that like on one of the sets, s- sets yeah okay so and i'm like hey sam uh, i really like your song it's, it's i'm so blessed by it or something like that wow is that a child in the background that's a <laughs> i kid, don't know that's a Happy kid Diwali. going crazy <laughs> that's a kid going crazy over fireworks I was a quiet kid mm-hmm. who enjoyed fireworks. Not like this, but <laughs> see, see, judgy, see, judgy, <laughs> judgy. <laughs> What's wrong with a kid? Like being loud? Yeah, uh, it's just I mean, disturbing to I other sh- people. I struggle but... with it sometimes. When a kid is really loud, I do struggle. I do pray a little bit. I'm like, God, help me, be patient. <laughs> you know. Oh, man. But yeah, so he passes you yeah, close so to I the just, steps, I and you're like, I love him. your song, Sam. I I didn't say it like that. See, okay. I never like to 
come across like a fangirl. Like, like a weird, like yeah. Like a fangirl, creepy. Right. Yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> but sometimes they also probably don't appear like they that. But maybe to, yeah. maybe to the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's See, true. to you now, you're on the other side. Yeah. So maybe if Sam got maybe, creeped out. I yeah. Don't know. But I just said, hey, I like your song. I'm really blessed by it. And right. I don't want to. I tried to be all cool about it. And he's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. And then he just goes away. And right. Like, How did that make you feel? Like I was a fangirl. <laughs> And I was like, uh, no. That's <laughs> no, amazing. No. I, I was like, uh, let's try that again. But we right. had already gone. But yeah. No, but it's true. Like, I mean, I think a lot of people, right, they want access to people. It's not like you're even fangirling per se. It's just like you want, because like the songs or their ministry, like for you, your, your ministry is touching people, but. Yeah. There's this like sometimes resentment we can have like, ah, he's yeah. so rude. Why didn't he make time? No, it, the thing is now, I think I do that to people. Right. I think, you know, that's the thing I'm saying about judgment, right? Like when you're in that person's place, right. there's like hundreds of factors that you don't know about. You right. just don't know it. Right. And when I'm, now that I'm in that place and people come up to me and say hi, sometimes it's hard because some people just come up to you and they're like, hi, can I have a selfie with you? And you're like, no, first tell me your name. <laughs> like, I'd like to meet you right. before my face is next to your face, you know. <laughs> right. But it's, there's so many other factors that go into it, right? Like, And I right. had to journey through that and be like, okay, they, they are ministered to by the song. They really love my voice and my song. Right. Even when people used to say, hey, I love your voice. I love your voice. The other thought is, oh, you just love my voice. You don't even want to know who I am. Right. You know, but that's the thing, right? Like that's where they're coming from. God stopped me in my tracks and he was like, hang on (laughs) before you judge them. (laughs) You know, they are meeting me in the songs. Right. They are meeting Jesus in the songs. Not me. I mean, God told told me that. Right. You know, they're meeting me in the songs. So when they come to love on you and honor you, it's actually just them trying to get a tangible form of me just to connect with me in a tangible way. So don't shun it or don't get irritated by it and right. that changed everything since then i'm very different when i interact and even if they come and they're just like let me take a selfie i'm like sure <laughs> oh that's amazing no that's i love that story because it's kind of like um i mean you talked about how like the three tips you know i guess you kind of actually had four or five but you talked about <laughs> <Steven>. <laughs> you spoke about okay like pray you know, you talked about have empathy. Mm. You talked about, hey, if you have that person as a someone in your life, go communicate. So dialogue with them right. and talk about the issue, which I actually, Prakuti, I'll give you that. Just doing ministry with you, doing Spikner stuff, doing stuff with Bridge. You're someone that's known for that. And I commend you for that. You do communicate. We've had some beef. Maybe we'll talk about <laughs> that in the future. Um, but no, I mean, it was like amazing. You talked about trust issues, like how sometimes mm. the judgment, you know, that you had, you know, mm. came from like trust issues and just maybe even people checking their hearts, you know, for that. And then, um, with the empathy, the mm. second point that you talked about, you spoke about the idea of putting, you know, yourself in people's yeah. shoes and, you know, henceforth this story that you're talking about, because you also come from a place where you judge people yeah. and, so I really, I really thank you for like these tips because like they're really amazing. You know, is there anything that you want to add to this? I will close with this. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, one thing that set me free was yeah. when God told me, you don't have to watch your back. I've got your back. Say that again. God told me, you know, you don't have to watch your back. You don't have to keep looking out for yourself because judgment comes from self-protection a lot of the time. Because yeah. you're trying to, that's how our brains work, right? Like we're constantly right. trying to put people in boxes and categories right, and labels right. so that we know exactly what to expect. Because if we don't know what to expect, right, we could be taken off guard. We could get hurt. We All of these things could happen. So we're always trying to label people. Oh, this guy is like this. This girl is like this. So you know what to expect so then you can maneuver through the world. Right. But uh, so much of walking in love means that you just let go of that control, let go of fear of the unknown right and let god watch your back right right and then you don't have to you know keep judging and you're just free to love and free to give yeah wow yeah thank you so much and that's a wrap that's a wrap that's a wrap with buffalo quesadilla (laughs) yeah dude this was actually really fun doing it with you thank you you have really and the thing i like about 
talking to you about these things is you're very honest, you know? Thanks. And I think like in honesty, people can actually learn. And that's also what I appreciate about Sam and some of these guys, you know, and I'm hoping to like start having actually these talks. I, when I was talking to you, I was thinking about having like a series talks of just, <laughs> no, no <laughs> talks with Sam. No, like just like even, you know, cause I'm going to Hyderabad, you know, next week, even having a talk with Rachel. Right. Yeah. Because yes. this is like serious. Like I think a lot of people, and actually something you said, Prax, you know, I know we were closing here, but you talked about the idea that many people think anything that's famous, anything that has favor yeah. is from the devil, which yeah. means people, some people think you're from the devil yeah. or like. Yeah, that's the, that's a real problem. That's what I'm trying to say. I used to be that person. Wow. If I had the resources, probably I'd be. The thing is, God challenged me again there and he was like, you ain't talking about my anointed ones. Right. You know, in church, like I said, I used to sit under these sermons and one day the sermon really hit me. Like my pastor did a ser- sermon series on David yeah. and how he could have killed Saul so many times, you know, but that's just so deeply rooted now in me yeah. that I cannot do that. Like even if I see someone super famous, even if they're, even if I think they're misleading people, yeah, I will not take their name because I just cannot do that to the Lord. Wow. And to myself, like I would be in trouble, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Man, shoot. Ah, uh, you know I could keep going, but I'm <laughs> gonna stop this here because honestly, this is good stuff. I want to really, honestly, keep talking to you and hosting yeah. this with you because that idea is so powerful. And I was thinking, you know, as Spike Nerd Bridge in our collaboration is really like I mean we're trying to see more people come together work together yeah. and if we have judgment you know yeah, for yeah, Jago yeah. if we have judgment for other houses of worship yeah. for people in Delhi for people you know in Kolkata like we'll never work together yeah. to see God's kingdom come and I really appreciate your honesty because it's actually even making me and even giving me vision for what this could become to really give these stories the actual stories of what it actually feels like when people are mis, you know, aligned on the side and and mm. judged and mm. put to the side, and and I love that you're being honest because you were like, I am one of you in a sense. If you're in that judgment seat, I was, I was yeah, sorry, <laughs> no, okay. I was one okay, of you. It's an everyday battle. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's true. Yeah. It's, it's like you're aligning yourself with the truth, right? Because in Christ yeah. Jesus, you are righteous, and yeah. you're not, you know, someone who judges people. And you, yeah. you know, I, I love That's that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much, Prax. Even thank you for letting me do this. It was so good to have these conversations and Aww. talk about all of these things. And yeah. I also just want to say that I love bridge music and <laughs> yeah. I honored Sam and Alex. <laughs> of course, I love, of I love course. them so much. I mean, of now course. that I have relationship with them, right? Yeah. So let's close with this. If yeah. you feel like judging someone, yeah, first build a relationship with them, right. either directly or through the Lord. Right. Like find out what God thinks about them. Right. And then you will be in for a surprise. <laughs> Dude, I love yeah. it. I love yeah. it. We just fist bump. Yeah, fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. Thanks, Thank everyone. you so much. Thanks.